The YouTube team keep it clean. What's going on? It's Engraven here with another video. And in this video, we're here to review the presser that we just watched that featured John Harbaugh, Lamar Jackson, Anthony Averitt, and Bradley Bozeman as well. Before we get into it, shout out to my guy from Cones Bags. He sent me this nice compact bag. You could use it for the gym, which is somewhere I don't go. Um, but I could use it when I make my trip uh, up there to go be at MT Bank Stadium for the Ravens home playoff games this year, right? We Anyway, uh, but I appreciate it. No, that was not an ad. I was just thanking him. So thank you. Anyway, um, in this press of the day, John Harbaugh didn't really say too much of anything. Um, they asked him about the Browns, uh, what it's like playing them now since you just played them two weeks ago. And they had a bye week. And he just said the only difference with playing them now is that uh, they don't have any more tape. Yeah, I said, okay. Yeah, that's true. Um <laughs> <laughs> we are even really looking at the tape like that anyway. But anyway, uh, he said that uh, with the, he was asked about Lamar Jackson and the, with how right now he's been struggling a bit to see the field. And he was asked if he could possibly, if, if they as a coaching staff could help him. And he said it's not hard to help Lamar find solutions with seeing the field. He said there will be good days and bad days. And he kind of gave like one of them little general answers. Nothing like specific, anything like that. And I was like, oh, okay. Um, and, and then one of my favorites, which we're going to talk about a little later too. Uh, he was asked about Lamar and the offense, that the, the way that they seem more comfortable when they're in this more fast-paced, up-tempo offense. And if the Ravens plan on like incorporating that a bit more, because I mean, yeah. And he said, it's definitely an option. And it's something that they've uh, done before. Uh, and he said, it's on the table. So... Okay, and that was pretty much it. Uh, just and, and I don't expect him to be, all right, yeah, we coming out this next game, we going no huddle. And w w nobody really expects him to say much, but again, actions. Actions speak far louder than any words that Harbaugh or anybody could say. And we see it how it's crazy with the Ravens. They slow, slow throughout the entire games. And then all of a sudden, uh-oh, it's crunch time. All right, y'all, let's pick it up. Let's pick it up. And then you see this offense moving. You see this offense wheeling and dealing. And, and just, they, 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 they move the ball downfield when the pressure's on. But when it's not, there's no urgency. So we, we will hope. And, and we don't want a Chip Kelly offense. Nobody's asking for that. Where it's no huddle literally every single play. But we need a wake-up call earlier. They got to wake it up earlier or else once the playoffs come, I ain't going to get to use my bag to, to come up there for no home playoff game. I'm not because it, they ain't going to have one. So anyway, um, Lamar was up next and he talked about how they left points on the field and he's just said they need to finish. And they kept putting themselves in bad situations. And yes, that ain't no lie. Um. Somebody asked if he it feels like he's holding on to the ball too long. And he said, yeah, yeah. You got to cut your losses. So you got to know when to throw it away. You got to know when to just take a sack. Uh, you you got you to gotta know when enough is enough and you're almost doing too much. Now, right here was where I was like, okay, is this a little, I, I don't know. Because they, they asked, somebody asked them about the blitz. Because we know that's been the topic of conversation for the longest now. Somebody asked, how, how often do you guys work on the blitz? Because I know I've seen a lot of comments, whether it be in the, in the videos or on Twitter, Facebook, wherever, where people say, man, how can the Ravens, a team, that, it almost seems like the Ravens invented Cover Zero with how much they run it. And not just this year, not just like, but they've been on this. Remember, take, it takes me back to that Week 17 game against the Browns, 2018. Fourth and whatever it was, they did a cover zero. That's when I first learned what cover zero was. They did a cover zero. And they, they sent the house. Baker Mayfield felt that pressure, threw it up. And C.J. Mosley, who was supposed to be blitzing, he ended up jumping up. Interception. Ravens win a division. Oh, man, that was beautiful. Um, but anyway... They, so people ask, if, if a team like the Ravens, they run cover zero so much, how can they not have an answer for it? But he was asked how often they go, they, they practice against the Blitz. And he said they practice against the Blitz every day. Every day. And it, that's, that's concerning. That, that, that's very concerning because, 
I mean, we've seen the results. The, the results have been pretty poor uh, from the Ravens recently against the Blitz. It, it just seems like they, they do not have an answer for it. They really don't. And teams, when, when a team sees, especially a quarterback like Lamar Jackson, you know Lamar Jackson, that, like, that's, that ain't just no regular quarterback. When teams see that Lamar Jackson and this Ravens offense is struggling so much with the Blitz, they're going to be like, oh, oh, really? Oh, let's run it then. And again, even with the Steelers, in, in that game, they said that, that was the, the game where the Steelers blitzed the most all season long. All season long. So, Because they knew. They saw. They saw the results from previous games. And they were like, hold up. Okay. These guys are on to something. So that's something. that like. And, but for him to say that they work on it every single day, I just, that was concerning to me. Because it was like, hold up. If y'all working on this every day, then where are the results? Where are the results? What's going on? And that's that's on Lamar. That's on Giro as well. That that's that's on just everybody. They gotta find ways to beat this thing because if they don't find ways to beat it, again, I ain't gonna get to use my bag to go to no home playoff game. Even if there was an away playoff game, if they don't find a way to beat it like ASAP, it might not even be one of those. Even though I do, I'm pretty sure. No, not pretty sure, but I, I do believe the Ravens are gonna make the playoffs. But anyway, um, he was also asked another one of my favorites. He was asked about the up tempo offense, and um, he said that he he said it's pretty cool. I always like when he says it's pretty cool because it almost it almost seemed like he don't really feel like getting into it with those questions too much. But he said it's pretty cool, and he said it helps them flex out the defense. And somebody asked him, like, okay, so why don't y'all run it more? Like, what, what's the challenge? What's the challenge with you guys running it more? Well, like, why don't you? What's up? And he said he doesn't know what the challenge is with doing it more. He just, he said there is no challenge. But he, he doesn't know what's going on with that. And the way that he answered that question, please go back and rewatch it if you didn't see it. it. It just seemed to me, in my opinion, it just seemed like that would be something that he would like to do more. Now, y'all remember, if y'all remember... A couple weeks ago, it, there was a presser where Mark Andrews was asked the same question about up-tempo offense. And I told y'all, when he answered the question, you could see he smiled. He got giddy about it. It was like he was like this little kid, like getting excited. He's like, <laughs> like, and you could tell that he, it was something that he would really love to do. But they don't, they don't do it. And then again, like I said, right, right after he was smiling and, and about the up-tempo offense, he was like, oh, but Greg Roman is doing a great job. So he sort of deflected it back to him in a respectful way, though. So I feel like, personal opinion, that these Ravens, this, uh, like they want to do that more. Now, I wish, I wish, like we know how Lamar Jackson does the, that, you, you know, when Lamar Jackson does that, that means it's fourth down. And that's Lamar saying, hey, I want to go for it. Don't bring special teams on here. Now, Something interesting is that I wonder, and I'm just thinking about this now, and I know I've seen some people say, oh, maybe, do you think Lamar Jackson lost trust in his coaching staff or lost, doesn't have faith in this offensive staff or whatnot, an offensive coordinator or whatever? Something that I, I just remembered. Usually when Lamar Jackson does that, Raven's like, oh, okay, cool. All right, yeah, let's, all right, go for it. Cool. But I do remember in the Dolphins game, in that Dolphins game, he did that. But coaching staff, they said, no, come here. They, they didn't listen to him in that. He, they, I forgot what quarter it was, but I, I know for sure that he was like, he wanted to go for it. And they said, no, no, we ain't going for it. So he walked to the sideline. He was upset. And just something that I just remembered just now. But... Big yikes there. Anyway, um, he complimented Devontae Freeman, said he's been doing his thing, which he has been. Because uh, somebody was like, oh, so has the, the chemistry or has your relationship with Devontae Freeman got, gotten better as far as the handoffs and whatever? And he was like, well, what was ever wrong with it? And the guy was like, oh, well, I remember there, there was a fumble between you two. And he was like, man, he's like, that, that was way probably back in week one. So Lamar Jackson, again, showing confidence in his guys. 
Um, he was asked about the schedule too. If he feels like the Browns, if they have an advantage, because of course we played the Browns and they on a bye week, then we played them again. He said they don't make the schedule, so it ain't really nothing to worry about. Um, and then he was asked, what gives him the most confidence that this thing is going to get turned around? Uh, and he pretty much named every single uh, skill position teammate, like the running backs, the receivers, tight ends. Now, and I don't really like that whole term skill position because as an offensive lineman, you still need skill. As a football player, period, you need skill. So when they say skill positions, uh, I'm not really a, a big fan of that one. But he talked about all those guys. He mentioned them and he said uh, that he's got them and they all trying to win too. So that's, that's why he feels this thing is going to get turned around. Now, and then the, the, very, la the very last question. You, you saved the best for last, right? You always save the best for last. The very last question was, and um, so Lamar, the Heisman's coming up. Where do you keep your Heisman trophy? And I was like, wow, that's okay. That's because I know like, uh, and I, I get it. You, you don't, you don't have to, or you don't even want to just all be these stone faced, serious questions. Da -da 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 -da. I get that, but I don't know, man. Sometimes I just be like, oh, but it's all good. Anyway, um, <clears throat> So, yeah, this, this offense, I just, I hope, and again, with Lamar letting him, hey, we work on this in practice every day. I hope that we see the results of that. Because, again, the Browns, you know, Browns going to send it. They are going to send it. I mean, they, they sent it in the game two weeks ago. They sent it then. So, they are going to send it until the, the Ravens have an answer. Now, I've been seeing, I've been seeing a few people. Who've been like, oh man, why are you getting on Lamar like that? Oh man, oh, and it's like, oh, what? what? Is, is, is Lamar Jackson above criticism now? He's not, not at all. And like we said in the video about what's wrong with Lamar Jackson, and I know there's some people like, oh, there's nothing wrong with Lamar Jackson. No, there is. And it is 1000% okay to say that. It is no hate on Lamar Jackson. No. I mean, y'all y'all know, y'all know Lamar Jackson, that's my guy, man. But if like I told y'all before in another video, and like y'all know from just life experience, if would you rather just be around a bunch of yes men? Cause yes men are no good for you. If you walking around you and, and you moving a certain way and it's it's not looking good for you, you want these people to tell you, oh yeah, hey, no, everything's fine, you're doing a great job, man. No. You want people that's going to keep it real, that's going to be honest. Because if you just have a bunch of yes men, you're never going to grow as a person, ever. You're not going to grow at all. If the only thing people tell, oh yeah, you're doing a great job. Oh yeah, you're doing this right. Oh yeah, you're doing a good job. And not to say that people are going to be tearing you down. But criticism is just fine. Especially when it's respectful. Because there's a difference. Because some people do disrespectful criticism. I ain't, like, I don't, I ain't down with that. But some people do it respectfully. And Lamar Jackson, yes, we were criticizing Lamar Jackson because he has not been on his A game. And again, we know the offensive line is a big yikes. We know, we know we've been saying that all year. All year, literally all year. Except for the Chiefs game. But besides that, all year. We know that sometimes receivers will drop some passes. No Mark Andrews. <laughs> But every, every receiver has dropped the pass Not just Mark Andrews Not just Hollywood Bateman over the past couple of weeks Sammy Watkins he done dropped some too So they, they all had a fair share of drops We know that Greg Roman Sometimes it, it, it ain't the best calls in the world Sometimes it'll have you scratching your head We know that But also on that list is Lamar Jackson and there have been times when the opportunities actually have been there. And he's just missed them. He's just missed them. Whether it's locking on to Mark Andrews too much. Um, whether it's holding the ball too long. Uh, whether it's just, again, throwing a bad interceptions. Um, it's, it, it, it can be all type of things. And But just I just feel like some people feel like if with you criticizing Lamar Jackson, then... That means that you hate him or something, and that couldn't be further from the truth. Now, big difference. There's, there's, there's a huge difference 
between hating on Lamar Jackson and criticizing Lamar Jackson. And trust me, you, you know a hater when you see one, especially when it comes to Lamar. Whether you see it on Twitter, you can always tell by when Lamar Jackson is doing bad. That, that Again, that's when they come out the woodworks. They show up big time. Whether Twitter, YouTube, whatever. You can tell by their, their tweet activity, their, their likes, their, their reply, all that stuff. You could, you could always tell. Always. It's clear as day. And if you see him on YouTube, same stuff. You see him on Instagram, wherever, wherever. Whether it's a, it's a professional, an analyst, or something like that, you you can always tell. But then there's the the criticism, the healthy criticism, the constructive criticism, the respectful criticism. And these are people that 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 see an issue that's going on, and they just want them to get better. That's it. They see an issue, they see a problem, they see something that's wrong. And they're not like, oh, ha, ha, that guy sucks. Oh, he's a bust. Oh, the Ravens shouldn't resign. No, they're not on that. What they're on is, hey, we know what Lamar's capable of. Because we all do. And you know what? That's whether you're a hater or not. Even haters of Lamar, they know what Lamar Jackson is capable of. Because we've seen it. We've seen it. And I hate that. Not even hate it, but it's just like. I know a lot of people, they, they always go back to 2008. This guy was an MVP, and he was, and that's a beautiful thing. But that was evidence of it then. I mean, you saw it times last year. You've seen it times this year, too. You know that this guy is just capable of the world. That's why when he is struggling, not to say he can't struggle, not to say he can't have a slump, but that's why when he is struggling, we just know that he can do better because we've seen him do better. And we've seen it a lot, a whole lot. This slump, because again, there have been people that have been trying to use this slump to try to be like, all right, well, nope, he doesn't deserve a big contract. Nope, uh-uh, no, he doesn't deserve it. Look at how he played against the Dolphins. Look at how he played against the Browns. Look at how he played against the Steelers. He doesn't deserve this contract at all. Now, you, you can't just take this slump. Even, oh, even the Bengals game, if you want to throw that in there too. You can't just take this slump and be like, all right, that's who Lamar Jackson, because it's not. It's not. And that's another reason why the people that criticize him respectfully, why they do it. It's not just to criticize him for no reason. No, it's to criticize him because they know what he's capable of and they know what he can do. Team, keep it clean. Y'all know what Lamar Jackson can do. We know what Lamar Jackson can do. We just want to see him get back to doing it. And we know his situation right now is not perfect. It's not by any means. It's not close to being perfect. All these injuries to so many different players. And right now... Yeah, I mean, y'all know, like, this team right now, moving forward, they're only going to go as far as the offense can go. Marlon Humphrey out. Marcus Peters obviously been out. You got Tay-Tay, who's been dealing with something. Jimmy Smith, who you know, he, you never know with him. Chris Westry coming back from an injury. Robert Jackson, who they just signed. Kevon Seymour, who he, they just, he just got to the active. So, Ravens... It's, it, it, defense might be a little rough They might be a little rough So It's just <laughs> Offense is, is uh, So much is going to be on them And something that we were saying In the video yesterday too about Lamar Is that we know That Lamar He wants to be there for everybody He wants to be The hero for everybody He wants We've seen it from his rookie, literally from his rookie season. He is somebody, hey, it's on me. Hey, that, that's my fault. Hey, nope, that's on me. He is somebody, and, and we've seen it in so many interviews, where they'd be like, oh, Lamar, uh, whose fault is this? They don't come out and say it bluntly like that, but they'll pretty much ask, hey, Lamar, whose fault is this? He will always put it on himself. Always. He will never throw anybody under the bus. He doesn't throw his players under the bus at all. Ever. He always say, oh, no, that's on me. So that's why with the hero ball 
And especially with so many people being out, so many people being injured for the year. That's why with the hero ball, it doesn't really come as a shocker because he's just, you know, he feels like, hey, man, this this is all on me. It's all on me. I got to be the one. It's all on me. I got to make a play for my team. It's all on me. So we just want Lamar to try to, and it's hard not to have that mindset because of what the situation is. But we just, we just want this team to be the best that they could possibly be. That's it. That's it. So it's going to take stepping up from literally every single body. Lamar, offensive line, Greg Roman, wide receivers, running backs, defense, hardball, everybody. everybody if they're going to do anything this year. Love y'all team. Keep it clean. We out.